I joined self-help, you know, formally in 1970. I came in and I wrote a grant. The building had had a terrible, terrible time during the 88 earthquake, the Whittier earthquake, 87, I think. And Karen had been fighting for a couple of years to, to try to find money. The way it worked was that, you know, the, the church gave the nuns the building uh, with the understanding that as long as it was always a cultural center and operated as such, that it would be. And you had Sister Karen, who was really a dynamic individual. I mean, she really was a, a, a lion um, and fought with these old, you know, bastards that were downtown and got that building. And the Franciscans were really dedicated, but the thing was is that, you know, the church said real clearly, don't call me up for anything, you know. So we had to pay our own bills and we had to make our own repairs, and so the building was damaged severely during the 87 quake. Needed about $150,000 worth of earthquaking. John Orders, God bless John Orders from the Irvine Foundation, came by and said, it's just a curve, it's his voice. Why don't you write me a grant? I got called in, I wrote the grant. She really did the homework. I mean, she paved the way. My grant was essentially, you know, the papering of what was already a deal. Grants, you write a grant, you make an appeal, you wait to hear money, or you make the deal, then you write the grant as a firmament. It's, it's a different, if the foundation it's a dynamic. But to his credit, John Orders had vision and, and said, I've got some money for you, but I need you to. And I came in and I, I wrote it out. And, and then uh, about a year later, um, uh, well, I mean, I started working with her, you know, doing this grant and that grant. And, um, and then about a year later, I decided to get married. Um, and I needed a job. And I said, I'm going to have to get a job. She goes, okay, fine, I'll make you a job. And she did. And so I was there until 97. But the last couple of years, she had started to slow down a little bit, you know, about 95. And I would had a run. I mean, she gave me the opportunity for, you know, my achievement in self-help, which was to take Prince to an international forum. You know, we, we went around the world with Prince to the Chicano Expressions show. There's a catalog here that you're missing, which is Chicano Expressions. It's not even available because it was only for European and the distribution is so minimal. But I will bring you a copy. Thank you. I need to get Cara, too. And, oh, I've got Cara, too. But, um... Thank you. But we took the artwork for this deal with the USIA around the world, and then we went and did a Day of the Dead in Scotland and all that. And that was because Karen basically said, you do it. And really put me as a front. She always felt self-conscious about not being a Chicano. Mm -hmm. You know, on one hand, she was incredibly egotistical and extremely visionary, but on the other hand, she was very humble. You know, Franciscans are taught all life is precious and to be utterly humble. And I also think that as a Franciscan and a woman from that area, but uh, she pushed me that way, and so I, I was really, you know, and then I was doing things that were, you know, and we, I'd sit there and say, Karen, we really need to organize a board. She goes, oh, honey, you do that, you know, when I'm gone, you do that. And in 96, she says, I want to retire, and I want to identify you as the executive director, and then I'll be the artistic director. And I said, Karen, as long as you're alive, you're going to be the director. It doesn't make sense to do that now. She goes, okay. So we worked toward transitioning. So yeah, we were, you know, she had, in essence, you know, decided, ordained me as being her, her you know, executive director. Uh